Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Breaking Monero. We have a really quick episode for you today on basics of blockchain explorer OPSEC. So we talked about remote nodes in episode seven and some of the considerations you should have when using remote nodes. But a lot of people forget about their network connection when they're using block explorers. So when they're looking up to see if a transaction they made was sent or confirmed by the rest of the network, they often will just do it without really considering what the impacts of those are. So today, again, you have me, Justin, you have Sarang on today to quickly remind you of some of the network limitations you have when talking to these block explorers. So I'm going to share my screen just to show you, you know, going to some of these explorers. So let's say, for example, I am on xmrchain.net, which is one of the most common Monero blockchain explorers. It doesn't look pretty, but it has all the nice info you would want on there. If I would put information in about you know five of my random transactions here and search for them and go through them, there's a good chance that since I'm looking up information about this transaction, that I have some connection with it. Now, of course, in this case, it was literally just the first one that appeared and I don't have any connection with it. But if you were going through and doing this by yourself, especially if you were searching for transactions, um, especially if you're searching for let's say five of your own transactions over a certain time period, the, this website has is, is able to make a pretty strong association between these. So first, this website gets my IP address, and this website also uh, knows that this specific IP address looked up these transactions over this time window. So they have a pretty good idea compared to anyone else in the network that I'm connected to these outputs. Similarly, there are nice front ends for XMR chain.net, like Explore Monero, where they have options where you can easily verify your transactions. So you can say, I sent Monero and fill in the details here. Or you can say, I received Monero and fill in the details here. And this is really usable and it's really nice from that perspective. But just understand that if you say that you received Monero and fill in the details of receiving Monero, this website is going to strongly assume that, you're, that you are associated with this transaction you put in here. So it will be able to associate it with your IP and in, with the same IP address, you're going to request this several times, let's say again, for five different transactions. It, there's a good chance that Explore Monero is going to assume that you are associated with all five of those transactions. So this is basically a reminder, just simply stating that when you use blockchain explorers, that you're revealing a lot of this information and a lot of people in their haste to learn information about their transactions often forget about this as they're looking it up. So I'm going to toss it back to Sarang, where he can talk about what really you can do if you need a, a sort of the information from a block explorer, but don't want to leak this information, or want to use a block explorer in a way that better protects your network metadata. Sure. Um, I mean, just to start with, you know, we're not saying that these particular examples of block explorers that we're showing um, you know, actually do, you know, track or otherwise, you know, attempt to go out of the way to log this information. Um, you know, it's just a reminder that, you know, anything you do on the internet, you know, the receiving server, you know, knows your IP, whether or not it's actually your IP or whether you're routing it through something else, you know, and they know the details of the query you made. Um, and this is no exception, um, but of course, you know, a lot of folks who use Monero, you know, attempt to do so privately. So it's important to keep that in mind. Um, some things you can do, of course, um, you can use uh, Tor, for example, you know, to route your traffic elsewhere. So your, you know, personal IP is not known to the receiving server. Um, if you use a VPN that you trust, um, you could make a particular query, you know, using the VPN. At that point, of course, you're basically like offloading the trust of knowing your IP address and some information about the query to your uh, to your VPN provider. So it depends on your trust relationship with them. them. Um, but as Justin was saying, even using some of those solutions, um, you know, for example, if I route through a VPN, for example, and I go on xmrchain.net or some other kind of block explorer, um, and I make, you know, queries about five or 10 different transactions, you know, if that all happens in quick succession, um, and, you know, the, the IP that they see for that is the exact same, you know, the person or entity running that block explorer, you know, might make an association between those transactions even if they don't have particular information that would necessarily link it back to me individually since I'm routing my traffic. You know, and again, I have no indication that these sites actually do this, but it's important to keep in mind that they could do that. So um, you know, if, if you do want to do multiple queries, you know, one thing you could do is try to use different browser sessions from different IP routings if possible. 
again, depending on your situation and your particular network setup, um, which would kind of reduce the amount of information that the receiving server would be able to get. Um, the best solution, of course, you know, as with many things, is to run your own node locally. So if you run your own node locally, you know, you have the entire synced blockchain and get new blocks and transactions as they come in, and you can simply query locally. And you know, if you trust your own node and your own computer that you're running, which we hope you do, then you're going to be OK. <laughs> you're not leaking that kind of information out. And it's also worth noting that you know, even if you don't necessarily want to use, say, you know, particular command line solutions or particular you know, local wallets that are you know, running alongside your own node, um, the source code for many of these block explorers is available and, on, and typically open source. So you, know, you could always run your own locally you know, web-based block explorer that connects to and queries information from your own node. So if you like a particular kind of explorer and their source code is available, you could always run it on your own node and get the same front end functionality you're used to, but without leaking that information elsewhere. All right, thanks to Rang. Um, this is basically just a, a nice reminder for you that blockchain explorers are no exception when you are leaking network metadata to others. And so we just wanted to have this really nice, quick episode uh, with you all to share this information with you, that if you, your threat model covers these sort of situations, you probably should be doing some local querying rather than relying on someone else to do the querying for you. All right, that's all that Sarang and I have for you today. Thanks for watching this episode of Breaking Monero. Take care.